Hello everybody, Brian David Marshall here at the Tournament Center with Pro Tour M15 Top 8 competitor Pat Cox. Pat, you are known for your love of the zoo That's in true. modern. What is the appeal of the zoo deck and, and what makes it a, a great choice for modern maybe in light of the recent bannings, unbannings, etc.? Sure. Well, I've just always loved zoo even since, you know, old extended, just been playing it for probably 10 years at this point. Wild McCoddle is by far my favorite card. I even own the original art for it, so. Do you really? Yeah, wow. Yeah, I do. That's dedication. So, but yeah, you know, I mean, I guess the appeal is it's incredibly aggressive, but also can win in the mid to late game. Like, you always have the top deck of, you know, of Tribal Flames or something. The Burn Spells double as removal for their guys, kind of get your guys through. Since there's so many colors, you have access to like very hateful cyborg cards just from any color and modern is full of those. Uh, as far as what the recent bannings did, Pod was probably a worse matchup be just because four Kitchen Finks is fairly unbeatable, but it's really eight. And then right. they added Siege Rhino to the mix. Right. That's just way too much life gain. Right. Kitchen Finks into Siege Rhino, getting your Kitchen Finks back yeah. is just a nightmare yeah. for you. It's unbeatable. So, uh, <laughs> so getting rid of that cer certainly helps you. Okay, so let's take a look at the early game for zoo decks, and you have a variety of one-drop creatures here that you can work with. Yes. Some of these you play, maybe some of these you don't necessarily play, but other people can. Talk to, talk to us about the one-drop creatures available to this Sure, game. well, I mean, Wild Nakato, clearly just the best one-drop ever printed. Um, and you know, Kurt Ape and Lone Lion, basically the same thing, maybe you just play eight of those. Step Link's very explosive. You can also even play Goblin Guide or maybe uh, Swift Spear. You know, you can just kind of overload on one drops. Your ideal draw is basically to play three one drops in the first two turns. That's very hard for most decks to beat. So if you go Wild Nakatl, uh, Kurt 8, Monastery, Swift Spear, something like that, yeah, that you're, you're, you're that, gonna be able to just kill your opponent? Yeah, that's millions of damage. I mean, that's very hard for them to, to do anything about. <laughs> You've done the math, years of repetitions, you yeah. know, millions of damage. Okay, let's take a look at that, the mid game. Uh, and so you, you have card, you still get to play cards like Tarmogoyf. This is a late game card for some other decks. Right, well, I mean, you know, if you, if you top deck that and the game's gone long, you're still very happy, you know, it, it's gonna be huge. But yeah, and, and your deck is just, you know, a, a four, five, for two, that's great. Pride Mage helps you attack into opposing guys. Also, it's kind of some insurance against, you know, Batter Skulls, Splinter Twins, that kind of thing. Affinity, if you want, you're playing against Frank, you know. <laughs> and then of course, you know, I don't know, if you had to rank all the cards in Magic, in the history of Magic, where does Lightning Bolt, is it, is it in the top 10? Is it in the top five, top it, it, 20? It's probably in the top 10. It's certainly in my top 10. But yeah. yeah, I mean, you know, a lot of decks in Modern play this as just, oh, it's a very efficient removal spell. You get to do that, but also point at their face like around half the time. So it's really a split card for you. Okay, and now let's let's talk about where, where you're going in the end. You, you alluded to it already, Tribal Frames, Flames. You have a, you have a mana base that's gonna let you get hit for five with this card, right? Yes, yeah. So domain meaning like for every land type you have in play, you do one you do one point of damage with this card. Right, and you only need actually three lands in modern to do that because of how dual lands work. So, you know, I don't, I don't have to have five lands. I, I can on turn four just cast two Tribal Flames and that's 10 damage, you're probably dead. <laughs> and then uh, Lightning Helix, of course, uh, you know, a notorious card from, from this. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of, kind of the extra, it's worse than those other two, but, you know, situationally better playing against another aggro deck, you know, it, get, the life gain is pretty relevant, so. Well, what would you say the mix of damage you do from your creatures and damage you do from your spells generally is in a game of, of magic here with this? Probably like 60 creature, 40 spells, something like that. So you're just looking to mop up those last, how much, and how much comes from their lands? <laughs> oh yeah, you are helped by that in modern, They're, you know, at least taking like four damage, so. Okay, well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna let you go uh, out on the floor, fight some more people who decide to start the game at 15 life or something uh, with Zoo. So if you're thinking about playing Zoo, think about what Patrick Cox has to say. Uh, the modern format, lots of decks are gonna be bringing you more from the Tournament Center all weekend long.